First United Methodist Church Milshoe. Today is May 17th, 2020. I am Robbie Bomer, your liturgist for the month of May. We welcome all those present as well as all of those listening in electronically. <laughs> and uh, we also ask that you adhere to all the social distancing guidelines and uh, uh, located in the back of the bulletin. Um, also, our offering plates will be located at the rear of the sanctuary. Sorry. Are, are, are there any new announcements? Okay. Well, then uh, um, we, we don't, we'll move on to the prayer. If you'd pray with me. Lord, we thank you for all the wonderful weather we've had this week. Not too much wind. We, we pray that this declining corona situation soon comes to an end. And we ask for prosperity for all of those putting seed in the ground, as well as running hooves on top of it. And we ask for a good season for all of them. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Robbie. If you please stand as we sing hymn 170, Oh, How I Love Jesus. We'll sing all three verses if you want to follow along in your hymnal. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to talk a little bit about. We're listening right now, honey. We're talking about sin today. Do you know what sin is, Lincoln? Like you send somebody a message? <laughs> kind of. Not quite. Sin is. Baby, sit down, honey. Hey. You're sitting really good. Yeah, sit right there. No, thank you. <laughs> sin is when we do something that God doesn't like. Can you think of an example of, of something that we do that God doesn't like? He doesn't like us kicking people. You're right. Yes, he doesn't. You're right. Punching people. Hit. Yeah. 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 Being mean to people is what God doesn't like. Right. Right. Thank you. 
Yes, yes, right? God doesn't like when we tell lies or when we be sneaky, right? Okay, so that is sin, right? Things that God doesn't like for us to do. What about things that God does like us to do? What does God like us to do? Yes, he does like us to be really, really, really nice. Well, so today I brought a little reminder of that for you and for brother. I brought some, do you know what these are? What are they? It's candy, but it's a special kind of candy. It's gummy worms, right? So on the, oh yeah, gummy worms are good. On the outside of the gummy worm, what does it taste like? Do you know? Like well, no, but on the on the outside tastes sour, right? Right? Just like sin in God's mind is kind of sour, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it makes you go, mm, right, like that, right? But this this candy is a reminder for us of God's love because even though he might sometimes get sour with us, on the inside he's always sweet, right? Just like gummy worms, huh? Yeah. All right. Let's say a prayer together. Can you say a prayer with us, Nolan? Put your hands together. Close your eyes. You want to say the prayer? Okay, come here. Let's say the prayer. Okay, go ahead. Dear God, I love you. Why don't you be with us every day? Why won't you stay with us? Thank you for everything we do for you. Amen. Amen. Good prayer. Thank you. All right, let's go. Any celebrations or blessings you want to share this morning? We celebrated in a small group uh, Axel's second birthday yesterday. So congratulations to him. And we did get a little shower last night. More's coming. I just know it. I don't know when, but it's coming. Because God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. And Terry's so good at that. Robbie and I were talking before the service about how I mess up. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good almost all the time. Uh, full circle. That was a good joke. <laughs> if you please stand as we sing uh, Holy Spirit together. We invite the Lord to come into this place and join us in worship. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. 
Today's scripture is John 14, 15 through 21. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The word, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come for you. Before long, the the world will not will not see me anymore, but will see. But you will see me, because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them. He is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. The word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. Thank you, Robbie. Holy Spirit. No matter what age we are, we are all still God's children. We're all children at heart. And we'll always be children in God's eyes. Yet, we like to think that we're completely independent. However, that's not entirely so. We need someone to watch over us, to shepherd and guide us. God has sent such a presence to those who trust in Jesus in the Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me? Holy God, One of Jesus' finally earthly acts before he ascended to be with you was to open the minds of his followers so they might understand the scriptures. He wanted them to know how his life and ministry had fulfilled everything that was written about him. We, too, 
desire to understand your word to us. We want to know the meaning of your life and death to our daily experiences. We ask for wisdom and understanding as this sacred text is proclaimed. Speak to us, we pray. The message of life, hope, and faith. Instruct us in the way you would have us go. This we ask in your holy and almighty name. Amen. We find Jesus talking to the disciples. Telling the disciples that he was going away. This most likely left the disciples feeling as lonely as Kevin did the morning he awoke and discovered the entire family was gone. The movie Home Alone. The disciples most likely felt they were being left to the wolves or the lions. Yet Jesus assured them that they would not be left alone. Jesus told them he would pray to the Father and ask the Father to send another counselor, the Holy Spirit. There are three English translations of the Greek term parakletos, which is used in the ancient texts. Advocate, counselor, and comforter. I want to look at each of these for a moment. Jesus said he would send the Holy Spirit to be our advocate. The idea of being our advocate is that the Spirit would be here to speak on our behalf, to defend us from the enemies within as well as the enemies without. The American Heritage Dictionary defines advocate as a verb, meaning to speak, to plead, or argue in favor of. Advocate is also defined as a noun, meaning one that argues for a cause, one that pleads on another's behalf, a lawyer. I've never really looked at the Holy Spirit as a lawyer. Maybe, maybe we need that. In the courtroom, most generally, the lawyer is the advocate for his or her client, the person that's on trial or being sued. The Holy Spirit is the advocate with God for professing Christians. The Holy Spirit intervenes for you and me with God. Jesus promises in his statement to send the disciples someone to watch over them. This could also be applied to you and me. Jesus would send someone to watch over us. Sometimes we do not know exactly what to ask God for when we go to him in prayer in our time of need. And it's in these times that the Spirit intervenes on our behalf, telling God what we really need. Not what we think we need, but what we really need. Whether it is defending us as an arbitrator or speaking on our behalf as a lawyer would before a judge. We also have people that speak different languages when we need to have an interpreter. In the scenario, this scenario, the advocate might be that interpreter. Whatever the circumstance, there are those times in our lives when we need that advocate. Second translation of the word parakletos is the term counselor. Counselor is quite similar to the previous connotation or term of advocate, yet it conveys that sense that the Spirit enables us to make the right decisions and choices. Again, turning to the American Heritage Dictionary, we find the term counselor defined as a noun, meaning 
an advisor, an attorney, maybe specifically a, a trial lawyer, also one who would supervise at summer camp. Regardless of which definition we would choose or utilize here, we all at various times in our lives need the benefit of a good and qualified counselor. For the most part, we do make logical and correct decisions and choices. However, we're human. And occasionally we might make a wrong one. If we are praying and seeking God's direction in everything, then the Holy Spirit is there on our behalf to give us God's wisdom, guidance, direction, to help us make the right or maybe I should say the correct choice. In high school and college, we, we have people we can go to for advice and counseling. The counselors offer wisdom and guidance and directions to the students so that they can make the right choices of courses they need for their future, whether it's in selecting the right college or determining the correct possible profession. Sometimes people seek counseling from their pastor, such as premarital counseling. Or maybe it's assistance with a family issue because they don't want to go talk to a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Regardless of the situation, the Spirit is at work on our behalf in the same fashion as a counselor giving us God's advice, direction, and guidance to help keep us out of trouble. Again, Jesus promised someone to watch over you and me. The third English translation of the term parakletos is comforter. This term comforter informs us that the Holy Spirit has been sent as a friend and more specifically a friend who doesn't necessarily tell us what to do, rather simply to be there for us when we're hurting. The American Heritage Dictionary defines the term comforter as a noun, one that comforts. A second definition is a quilted bed cover. Jesus promised to send the disciples a comforter. The disciples would need a comforter after Jesus had left them. They didn't realize that at the moment, but after the crucifixion, after the resurrection, the persecution would continue and they would need someone to offer them comfort. The Holy Spirit would come as a comforter or friend, if you will. Again, the, the term comforter infers and informs us that the Spirit is our friend. A friend that does not necessarily tell us what to do, yet is there for us when we are hurting. When we support a family grieving over the loss of a, a family member or a friend, we're doing so as a comforter. Maybe we've received some bad news. Losing a job or hearing of a, a family member's accident or maybe we've had the accident or we've been injured and maybe we're looking at surgery. It's in those times of our lives that we need someone to come alongside and offer comfort to us, offer us hope, 
and reassurance. Again, we've, we've all had those times in our lives that we need that close, special friend to be more than just an advocate or counselor. We needed them as a comforter. We've all, maybe I'm presuming, but I think we've all had those special people in our lives that are more than just a friend. They're a special friend that we feel comfortable with talking to. To receive God's comfort through them in the tough times when we're hurting or needing advice or a third party, an outsider's input. God sent the Holy Spirit to the disciples and to us to be our comforter in those specific times. Jesus promised to send someone to watch over you, to watch over me. I challenge and encourage you to allow the Holy Spirit to work through you to be an advocate, not just your advocate, but maybe an advocate for someone else, to be a counselor for you or for someone else, to be a comforter for you or for someone else, just as others have been advocates, counselors, and comforters in your life. Jesus promises all of us that we, that he would ask God to send someone to watch over us. God sent the Holy Spirit to watch over you and me. And he calls us to become instruments to allow the Holy Spirit to work through us in the lives of others. You have a choice. Will you invite the Holy Spirit into your life? Will you allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through your life for someone else? To be a counselor, an advocate, or a comforter? Would you pray with me? Loving Lord, you knew from the outset, as you walked and journeyed and ministered to the disciples, that they would need that special person, encourager, advocate, counselor, comforter. And you know, back then, even now that we need the same. We're no different. Pour your Holy Spirit onto us and into us anew. As you come to us in those capacities and you equip us in those capacities to be the same for someone else using us to your glory. For we ask it in your holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Again, in, in keeping with the social distancing guidelines, we will not be passing the offering plates. Uh, there's a plate outside either door as you exit to drop your offering gift in. If you're watching online through the various electronic venues, uh, you may mail your donation to P.O. Box 505, Muleshoe, Texas, or go to the church website and access donation online. If you're watching from Earth and the congregation there, 
you can mail your, your gift there to P.O. Box 181, Earth, Texas. Would you pray with me? Lord, you know our needs before we ever ask, individually and corporately. And in these crazy times, pour your blessings upon us and use us as encouragers. Use us to support the kingdom work. Bless the gift and bless the giver. In Jesus' name. Let's respond with a choral response in singing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. All verses, page 526. you to be equipping you through the Holy Spirit in Jesus name again in 
cooperation with the social distancing guidelines, if this side would exit through the back door on the right, my right, the left side here, exit through the double doors, no high five, you can high five distance wise, but no hugs, no handshakes. And if you want to elbow, whatever, but go forth as loved children of God. Amen. <laughs>